Is your favorite rapper Polo G? I don't even know. Capitalize. Capitalize. <laughs> <laughs> your boy went Capitalize, man. <laughs> hey, we ain't talking about stalling out. This man, this man, Hey, Bebo, stalling out. All right, so. I want to bring up a sour spot here for Brad. Y'all remember what happened last time these two teams played? <laughs> it was a debacle. <laughs> the Eagles won 34-3. Brad, you, you okay? I don't, I, don't want you, I don't want you to leave the room or anything now. Oh, we need you here at R1P Studios. It's not going to happen. They can turn it around. They can potentially shut down Minnesota's offense. They're not shutting down Boy, Mc I, I Arthur's high school's offense. Dude. The Oxford Hill Clippers offense. Yeah. yeah. They're not shutting down nobody's offense. But I don't I don't see it happening either, KT. You don't think but, uh, Trevor uh, Lawrence and ETN could put up 40 points against the Seahawks? Yeah, I think so. KT. KT, you know what time oh, 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 Chief, you on the investigation, man. You already know what time the, about, the, about, about, about the ATL. <laughs> the ATL. Everybody want to talk to you, True. Hey, 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 talk to him, Detective LL Cool, Brad. What the hell are you smoking? Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm smoking that. Ooh, wee. Yeah. <laughs> okay. My man's cigarette was late. Don't but, do it. Break up, You came to our stream today. Did you or did you not stop at the liquor store to get a bottle of him? No. <laughs> but I got one time. Oh, okay. When we see you smoking uh, a cigarette doing, while Move Vibes was doing Vibes, Stradamus, was that cigarette laced with anything? <laughs> no. Hold on, 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 before you even go there, is your caps enabled on your uh, keyboard right now? No. Is your favorite cereal Captain Crunch? No. Didn't you have a cap on earlier? No. <laughs> okay. Hey guys, it's the R1P True. Welcome to R1P Game Day Countdown, where we will give you our predictions and our analysis of games this week. Join us and relax. What up, what up, what up? You already know what time it is. It is the Monday Night Countdown. We in the man cave tonight. I am your host, Lever KT. To the right of me, maybe to the left of you, we got Moon Vibes. Moon Vibes, what's going on? How you feeling today, man? Yeah. Shout out to you. Shout out to you. Shout out to you if your team won last night. <laughs> oh, Shout out to you. Man. I guess now, if your team lost, hey, got to be more careful. <laughs> I, I, but if they won, hey, some congratulations. Hey man, like we the way we lost, bro. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> terrible. But that's neither here nor there tonight. We're we're here to talk about the uh, Minnesota Vikings versus the Chicago Bears. What are some of your early thoughts in this game, Moon? Um, at first, when the schedule kind of came out, we started this game on the schedule. I was just like, why are they giving us another horrible Monday night matchup? Mm -hmm. Like, why are they doing us dirty like this? <laughs> like, give us a good game, man. Like, like for at least once. Last week, I think it was Patriots and Jets. Mm -hmm. um, this week kind of gets a little better. Um, but my initial thoughts is like, this game is in Chicago. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a cold game. It's probably going to be frigid. <laughs> you, <laughs> I don't know how many, I don't know what percentage of fans is going to be there in attendance, mm -hmm. um, but they're going to probably be bundled up and stuff. It's just one of those November games, and that's really what my thought process was on. November game, right. you know, do we get a run game today? Mm -hmm. uh, that's what my thoughts was. What about you, bro? What, what were your initial thoughts when you same, saw this game on the matchup? Same thing. Sneaky good game. Like, I'm a fan of purest football. Like, period. Mm -hmm. Like, I think this is going to be a purest football game. You're going to see an amazing rushing game uh, that can set up the passing uh, uh, play-action offense for the Vikings. And on defense, you're going to see one of the best defenses in the league, who I think they're ranked eighth in the league right now, but it's because – 
their defense is always on the field. Like, <laughs> how many more three and outs can you get? But this, it, this, it's going to be a great football game tonight. I'm excited. Um, you want to do a roll call in the chat, see who's here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got a roll call. Shout out to uh, Steezy in the building. What's up, my guy? Queen, uh, Queen Steph is in the building. She says she's on. She's working on her off day right now. I appreciate you being in the building and joining us. Uh, shout out to Truth in the building. What's up, Truth? LL Cool Brad is in the building. And that's what it looks like right now. Uh, we got other people in the building. Uh, we just they, they just haven't shown up in the chat yet. But yeah, shout out to y'all, man. Glad y'all spending y'all time with us before we get into this kickoff of this game. Uh, I, absolutely. I'm excited everyone is here. Um, so we decided to do an impromptu uh, 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 countdown, which we was going to do tonight. But we was like, you know what? Truth. Uh, get well, Truth. Um, truth yeah, had to have a procedure, to uh, procedure today. Um, Jalen has, has a lot on his plate. Um, figure Brad in, in school and, you know, dealing with everything he got to deal with. So, you know what? Hey, it's, the, it's the bros tonight. It's, it, it's, it's, <laughs> you see uh, Moon is in his man cave uh, from Georgia. I'm in the nation's cap. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to make cage. it do what it do. Um, AKT, so, you want to you wanna get into the, the tail of the tape? Let's get, let's get into the tail of the tape, bro. All right. So now we got the Bears. They are ranked uh, overall 18th. Offense is 29, <laughs> almost third to last. <laughs> Defense is ranked number uh, eighth. And um, special team is second. Uh, for mm -hmm. the Vikings, the, uh, overall, uh, for their team rankings, their 29th offense is uh, surprisingly 24th. Defense is mm. 23rd, but they got the first uh, special teams, uh, you know, the best-ranked special teams in the league. So we need to, that's something we need to look into. It's the black and blue division. Um, so I'm excited to see that. Like, how do you, how do you think the teller of the tape will play a part in this game today? Um, greatly. You know, you mentioned uh in the mid twenties for the Vikings offensive and defensively. Mm -hmm. I mean, hey, that's an improvement when they started off the year rocky as hell. Mm -hmm. Um, so you know, I think it'll play out. Um, what did you have the Bears defense rank? They're like number eight. Number eight right now. Yeah. That that to me, man, they at least top five. I feel like they top five. I think they'll show that tonight. Um, actually, right. against the Vikings, um, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna get we're not gonna get to final scores, predictions, and stuff just yet. But right. I think that the Bears defense is locked down, like mm -hmm. um, very physical, uh, flat of the ball. My only concern is just like, um, can they can they not pull the Pittsburgh Steelers? And when I say that, I mean Pittsburgh plays in games sometimes where they just like yesterday they just put the they foot on the Bengals' neck. Mm -hmm. versus other games versus Dallas where they kind of like just let off the gas like that game wasn't supposed to be close now it makes me think like can the Bears like put their foot down against the uh, especially at home defending mm -hmm. the home field can they put their foot down against the Vikings and say like Kirk Cousins look we about to take we about to make you beat us because at the end of the day we know you can't but at right. the end of the day, we we, we gonna take Dalvin Cook away because it, that man has been on another level for this year. He he's he's on another level. Right. But that's how I think that it'll play in. But uh -huh. surprisingly, we saw on the Thursday night game how much special teams played a big factor. You saying um the Vikings had the number one special teams? Yeah, number one special teams. The Bears is also in the top five with special teams. I think that special teams will be a great part mm -hmm. in this game, whether it's kicking and or uh returning punt mm -hmm. and kickoff mm -hmm. um you know you got Cordero Patterson back there who is the Vikings punt returner kick returner uh is it still Cheryl's or is he not he's not there no more I don't think he's there anymore but it was he, he was a staple in their return game for a long time yeah um, and um I just I think special teams just like Thursday night I'm not predicting a block punt or anything or a horrible punter. <coughs> That's easy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to call no names. I don't want to call no names out. But, yeah, it, it'll it'll play a factor. I think special teams will play a factor more than the offenses. Because it's going to be a battle. But since you think it's going to be a purest game, similar, you think it will be more purest than the Browns versus uh the Browns versus Texans just over, over the weekend? Nah, it, it won't be. Uh, as long as uh, Kirk Cousins um, don't fold in the lights like he typically does, um, but not, I, I, I think uh, both teams are going to be forced to score. I, I don't think it'll be uh, like the, as pure as the Texas and the Browns game, which I enjoyed. 
Um, mm. But 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 maybe we're whoever first first team to twenty wins. <laughs> mm. I, th- I think it'd be something like that. So I'm thinking more of a score like the the uh, the Bears versus the uh, Bucks that game. Yeah. Uh, yeah. At home. Like twenty was it twenty to nineteen or so? It was something like that. But it was a highly exciting game. Uh, mm-hmm. Like p- possessions mattered, and I prefer those games over the high scoring games. I'm sorry, give me a game like that uh, instead of the like you know the KC uh, Kansas City and the Rams game a few years ago. Yeah, uh, that was epic. Oh, all those points scored. No, I, I like defense. Um, I'm a cornerback by heart, so nah. Uh, <laughs> but Moon, what, what did you learn this week? What did you learn I, from week we, ten? We learned a lot this week, and honestly. Um, I don't even know where to start. Um, mm. Hold on. Give me a second. Okay. But honestly, if I'm just being real with y'all, how how these playoff picture is shaking up is the main thing that I learned. But we'll talk about that a little bit mm. later in the show because we're going to get into the playoffs and everything. Um, what I learned. Postseason chances is, is really – up in the air right now we don't know who's gonna win each division um although the Steelers look dominant right now um Mm -hmm. in the AFC AFC North um they're pretty much the only bet right now between the Steelers and the Packers um that seems like but it's really too early to call but for the 2020 season there will be a total of 14 teams getting in which is up from 12 um that made it from 1990 to Mm -hmm. 2019 but the beauty in the NFL playoff race right now is the fact that all 32 teams are currently still alive, which is news that might actually come as a slight shock to some Jets fans. Yeah, Jets fans, if you listen, you still have a chance to make the playoffs. Although they currently have zero runs, they're still mathematically alive. So in the mortal words of Lloyd Christmas, I'm telling you there's a chance that your team could still end up in the playoffs, Jets fans. But one reason, <laughs> <laughs> but one reason every team is still alive is because of the playoff expansion. Or 14 mm-hmm. teams getting in. Um, that means seven teams will be getting in in the postseason from each conference. There's also a chance that we could see 16 teams get in, but, mm-hmm. you know, uh, we mentioned that in previous shows. That's still an option. Um, what I learned this week is that Tom Brady and the Buccaneers, uh, they bounced back and they got – they was they was on a Drake Summer 16 looking for revenge. <laughs> <laughs> on Summer 16. Hey, that's All week. <laughs> All week 10. Sorry, Teddy. <laughs> Sorry, Teddy, and uh, prayers up to Christian McCaffrey because it just seems like as soon as he comes back, he got to deal with something else, man. Right. Um, but yeah, man, it, it, it just seems like for the time being, the Bucks they put their foot on down on the neck. Mm-hmm. Um, shout out to Alex Smith, even though he threw. Uh, Truth mentioned him last night in the show, but mm-hmm. like even though I've had some time to think about it, the marinated KT, mm-hmm. I went back and watched the highlights of that game. He was throwing some dots. He was. He and was. It, I think the the later that he went in the game, the more impressive that he became. And I was sitting there, like, looking, looking, watching TV, like, this is really Alex Smith right now. Um, that's another thing that stood out to me. Of course, uh, Ronald Jones getting, like, 192 yards rushing was a big thing. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray, bro. You, you put the team on your back, bro. I know you didn't come out early but honestly there's a people out there saying nah d hop d hop put the team on his back right, right. <laughs> but great win though especially when you factor in the fact that the seahawks play the cardinals this thursday in a game that could really decide that division mm-hmm. um steelers look dominant they eight and on i mean not nine and on i'm thinking yeah, eight or nine, on. And on. nine and on um other other notable matchups um my Falcons didn't take a loss. <laughs> hey. so, so that's a win. That's a win in my book. Yeah. But ultimately, um, it, it, it just really just comes down to one thing and one thing alone. Who is going to beat Kansas City in the AFC? And can anybody um, compete with the Saints right now? That's what I learned over the course of the week. What did you learn, my bro? I learned a couple of things, and it's going to hit home. I learned right now the Patriots – are two they're on a two game winning streak best organization in all of football mm. um, best coach organization in all of football and um also the dolphins are for real mm-hmm. Florence please put some respect on that man name Mike Thomas mm-hmm. should with coach of the year but he should be a close runner up um 
Also, there's like six or seven teams in the AFC with uh six wins. Yeah. That's they all crazy. like congested together. Yeah, like. it's it's crazy. And then you look at the NFC least and it's like, well, damn, what are these teams may finish over five hundred in the AFC mm-hmm. and not get a playoff spot? Meanwhile in the NFC least, somebody may go six and ten and win that division, bro. <laughs> or six nine and one and win that division. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I don't know. I, I felt like I, I learned a lot this week. This this week was very telling. Uh, oh, one on one last thing. Titans, Titans, mm. Titans. Bro, call all Titans fans. <clears throat> what y'all gonna do when they take away Derrick Henry in the playoffs? Because Ryan Tannehill not looking like the guy right now. And y'all see them playing against the Colts, and that's who they got to beat to get that first place spot. And honestly, they play at the Colts in a couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Could Ryan Tannehill come on and be like, he looking for revenge? <laughs> <laughs> Could he? I don't know. But right now for the Titans fans, get rid of your punter ASAP. Send them back to FedEx. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, you want to give us a chat update on what they learned this week? What did y'all learn this week, chat? Um, we're going to come to y'all. Uh, somebody says Cordell. Uh, Jalen says Cordell. He's just a running back. Uh, by, a kick returner now. Both teams will be forced to score. Yeah, Vikings got this. <laughs> Jalen <laughs> uh, Truth said, I think Dalvin goes off. Um, Jalen says, nah, Dalvin getting locked. <laughs> uh, Jalen <laughs> says, still in the Jefferson Eaton today. Got to be more careful. Um Jalen said, I learned that A-Rod relies on Devontae too much. I ain't mad at that, though. Mm-hmm. We got to talk about that real quick. And he said, and Kubra said, oh, now you're talking about <laughs> calling them the Aints because they doing good now. And CC said, I learned that the Pats and Giants are still alive. Um, Dolphins are Dolphins scary, and the Titans are booty cheeks. <laughs> 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 Y'all are hilarious, bro. Facts. Um, but that's a lot. But going back to what Jalen said about him relying on Devontae, Jalen, Devontae is hurt again, bro. Again. He got another. I think he got another ankle injury. Again, bro. You trying to trade four players for him? I would have been fighting you, bro. <laughs> Me and you would have to square up. We would have to. I think he's great, but what you said is true. I think he relies too much on him. And although MVS went off yesterday, um, he only had four catches, so all his passes came from deep passes. This is the only way he can really get open. He's not mm-hmm. really a route runner for it. Mm-hmm. Um, Devontae is route running specialist. But, you know, I do feel like they rely on it, and that game shouldn't have really been close. But, unfortunately, it was. Wow. Yeah, this this week, like I said, is very uh, telling. Especially in the NFC, you, you're starting to see teams separate themselves from the pack. Um, I, I don't know who's winning the East. Uh, r- right now, I like what I'm seeing from Daniel Jones. Terrible offensive line. Uh, mm-hmm. He doesn't have a number one receiver. Um, mm-hmm. he, I, in my opinion, he has a bunch of number three receivers. No mm-hmm. running game. And this guy is just, like, putting that team on his back. Like, please put <laughs> some respect on that man's name. He got so disrespected during draft night. Like, please. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, like, re- respect him a little bit. So, um. Uh, mm-hmm. Hey, we learned a lot this week, man. So let's uh, let's get into where everybody came in for, man. Let's get into some fantasy vibe stuff. Yo, 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 yo. We back. You know what I'm saying? Fantasy <laughs> vibes. I'm your master of ceremonies, Lever KT, and we got the one and only. Move vibes. What's going Shout on, out to dog? y'all, bro. Shout out to y'all. Appreciate you, MC. Appreciate you. Look, we gonna talk about real quick. We gonna talk about this whole uh, Monday night game that they got that we think is gonna be a Pierce game. But I'm gonna break it down in three different levels. I'm gonna talk to you about the 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 realistic part. I'm gonna talk to you about the betting side if, for those that are gonna be betting tonight, and I'm gonna talk to you about the fantasy perspective. So if y'all ready, I'm ready. Let's get straight into I, it. Let's I, start off. Hey, Go ahead, hey, bro. bro, you caught a lot of slack last night, and I didn't get to thank you for my dub over the number one seed, the truth. <laughs> thank you for them key pickups that I, you know what I'm saying, that helped me, that put me over the top against the truth. Um, hey, listen, I, I was trying to I was trying to help some people out, bro. You right. know they're going to try to pass right. me every time yeah. I get a bad yeah, take. Man. But hey. listen, hey, you won your fantasy matchup? 
right. Hey, what they need to know is only one vibe Shadamus. And speaking of vibe Shadamus, Moon, tell me something I don't know. Hey, listen, and listen very closely. The highlight and headline in this game is, can the Vikings continue to be efficient offensively against a good Chicago defense? It was a slow start to the season for Minnesota, but the team's offense is starting to come together finally. Kirk Cousins ranks 10th in pro football focus grade at quarterback, and Dalvin Cook has more rushing yards at the contact, 602, than any and than every other running back not named Derrick Henry has overall. Think about that. If you look at the Vikings' recent schedule, it's not necessarily filled with defensive juggernauts, though. Teams such as Tennessee, Houston, Seattle, my barbecue Falcons, and Green Bay aren't offering a whole lot of resistance. For all the teams' faults offensively, the Bears' defense is still one of the better groups in the NFL, finishing and ranking uh, fifth overall in expected points added per play allowed. It will be a good test under the lights on Monday night um, to see where Minnesota ranks as far as their offense. Now let's talk about the betting side for those betting tonight. The spread quickly reversed off of the ne- um, the one opening um for the Vikings, and the Vikings are currently a two and a half point road favorites, which is interesting. Only three places separate these two teams in the overall ELO rankings, but the Vikings have a far superior offense than six are overall. Just look at their firepower. The Bears are only one of seven teams to have a negative EPA, EPA on both passes and rushes attempts, which explains why this team, its total, is the third lowest of week 10 as far as the over under. Now, the Vikings are not listed in the to make the playoffs um, on FanDuel as far as the bets, but they have to win this matchup, which could explain some of the bet and sentiment of them this week. Green Line does, not, does offer a play on ever-changing spread, which could be a bet to lock in early. Um, they got Minnesota two and a half. Um, give me, give me, I say the Vikings. No, I say the Bears cover. I say the Bears cover. Um, fantasy football perspective, though. The Bears should be passing early and often against the Vikings secondary. David Montgomery has been there every down back, but he suffered a concussion this past week and could miss the game. At the very least, he will miss some practice time. Minnesota is tied for the league average in touchdowns allowed to wide receivers at 16. Enter Allen Robinson the second, and he has the second most targets on the season and should see plenty of opportunities for big plays. Enter rookie Darnell Mooney. Could, who could also finish and finally break out as a um, clear number one receiver from this game. He's been clear second receiving option for the Bears since week four. His 40 targets in that time ranked 16th among the all wide receivers and second most on his team. He will see, again, plenty of targets and could, could connect with Nick Foles on a big play or two. Watch out. Now, for the Vikings, their receivers have an interesting matchup against the Beckham Bears secondary. Chicago has allowed the third fewest points to wide receivers this season. You heard that correctly. <laughs> Their secondary has one area of weakness in the slot, and his name is Buster Screen. Now, he has allowed the second most receiving yardage from the slot this season. The Jets' primary slot receiver is Chad Beebe, but Justin Jefferson has also played significantly in the, in the slot and has experienced success. Jefferson, however, has the most yards per route run from the slot at 3.53 among players with at least 75 slot routes run. Minnesota could use Jefferson more in the slot this week to avoid that matchup. Chicago has not used shadow coverage at all this season, so the Vikings will be able to form whatever matchups they want on the outside. In my personal opinion, if you can get Justin Jefferson away from Kendall Fuller or Kyle Fuller, do it and do it expeditiously. For this special edition of Vibe Shadamas on the Monday night matchups, betting and fantasy perspective, we send it back to the MCS ceremonies, Lever KT. Bro, it was uh, uh, a lot of information in there, and I feel like you 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 mentioned some key names. So how about we do this? Um, we're going to get into the injury report right after this. How about we do a start, bench, practice okay. squad, cut? Okay. All righty. With right. the receivers of the NFC Norris. All righty. We got Devontae Adams, Adam Thielen, Allen Robinson, Kenny Galladay. Go. Dang. Start Von, start Monte, uh, bench Thielen, uh, practice squad Allen, and Galladay will be cut. Okay, I agree with you with Galladay being cut. But you you differ. I got I got I got to propose a question for you though. Allen okay. Robinson has played with some of the worst quarterbacks you can possibly play with this in his true. career. This is even true. in Jacksonville. So has Adam Thielen. So is so. <laughs> 
<laughs> you're right, dog. <laughs> you're, you're right. So I'm saying I, I have a question to ask you. Okay. Put Devontae Adams in Chicago. Put mm. Allen Robinson in Green Bay. Whose production will be better? Allen Robinson putting up at least 30 points a week. <laughs> Damn. And then I say that I'm being extra. I'm being mm-hmm. extra to be funny, but mm-hmm. like he, his production would definitely take a, a, a leap forward. Um, I think that what's hindering him is mentioning what you said, the quarterback play, right. um, whether it was Mitch, whether it was, um, you know, now Nick Foles, mm-hmm. but through his time being here, don't forget he was frustrated earlier this year. We thought he was about to get traded. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. But I think mm-hmm. that uh, we, if we swap him out, um, I think. But it, it's crazy because I think he will get more production. But at the same time, if you swap him out, he would still be in the same situation as Devontae because A. Rod only can depend on Devontae. So right. A. Rod will only be able to really depend on Allen Robinson. So right. it, it's. I would love to say it's more production, but then I'll have to say, mm-hmm. okay, well, who's the better wide receiver? Mm-hmm. I would say Devontae. Mm-hmm. Um, Slightly better than Allen Robinson, but I do put respect on A-Rob's name. Um, his targets are re- ridiculous with second in the league in targets. And um, I think that um, could those targets still remain if he was in Green Bay? Yeah. Um, but I think he would still be in the same situation. Now, if you took Devontae Adams and you put him in the Bears, his side would be limited because of Nick Foles mm-hmm. or Mr. Trubisky, whatever side would go to. Right. Um, but I think that solely outside, all three, well, all four of them, Galladay, Thielen, Robinson, and uh, Adams, all four of them can play exclusively on the outside. Mm-hmm. But all four of them could slick play in the slot, too. Um, gotcha. And that's where it's interesting. So who who did you say again as uh, far as your uh, star? My- Bench, practice squad, cut. My, my we agree was, on Galladay. My, my, yeah, yeah. We, 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 we agree on Galladay. Um, I think my, my issue with Robinson is that DeAndre Hopkins was able to get production from Brandon Whedon and a host of other sorry quarterbacks, and he was still able to get his numbers. Period. Mm-hmm. And you, you seen what he did yesterday. Um, I mm-hmm. would switch Devontae Adams and Adam Thielen. Mm-hmm. I was not a big Adam Thielen fan. I thought he was a product of Diggs, and this year he's proved he's an alpha number one wide receiver. Um, so I, w- I would switch them two just because Adam, uh, 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 Devontae Adams can't stay on the field. This has been the mm-hmm. last two seasons he cannot stay on the field. So I will start mm-hmm. feeling uh, Devontae Adams on the on the bench, Allen Robinson practice squad, and Galladay, you got to get cut. My apologies, brother. But even if you look at dur- durability, Thielen is more durable than Devontae Adams. Yeah. And then if you look at the stretch that Thielen had where he was putting up consecutive 1,000-yard seasons with, like, I think, like, 100 catches or so, Mm -hmm. like, he was putting up numbers comparable to, like, that stretch that A.B. had Mm -hmm. um, when he was going crazy. Right. So he was just doing that with Case Keenum, and he was doing that with Kirk Cousins now. So Mm -hmm. I I can't be mad at you at all. Like, I was tempted to go that route too. Mm -hmm. But I just think Devontae is probably the better route runner. So that's why I would probably start him. More yeah. than Thielen, but yeah. Thielen is just more, Thielen is more reliable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think I think and I think that's important. Like mm-hmm. the eye test, who's a better receiver? Adams, like you said, mm-hmm. route runner. He made Chad Ocho Cinco one of the greatest. I say top five route runners of <laughs> all time. Make him cry. He made him cry. Also, people need to put respect on Tory Big Game Holtz, a route runner ability as well. Um, but yeah, I, I, I had fun with that. So you got an update on the injury report? Yes, sir. We got an update on the injury report. So, Bears, Vikings. The Chicago Bears have had a lengthy injury report all week long. In today's final injury report, before they play the Minnesota Vikings on Monday Night Football, is a little cleaner. The Bears still have a few players ruled out for the game. Nose tackle John Jenkins is out. Uh, defensive back Sharik McKinnis is out. Quarterback Mitch Trubisky and running back David Montgomery are all ruled out and will not play. Montgomery is still in concussion protocol after taking a hit in um, last week's game. Center Sam Mustafer, who hasn't practiced all week with a knee injury, is actually doubtful for the game. Offensive tackle Jason Spriggs, who missed practice earlier this week with a knee injury, was limited in practice today and is one of four Bears listed as questionable. The other three um, are tight end Cole Commit, growing, who had the same practice schedule as Spriggs this week. 
and outside linebacker by Kevious Mingo's shoulder. Remember when he was on the uh remember he was on the Browns? <laughs> He's dealing with a shoulder this week and wide out Allen Robinson, who we just got talk- who we just talked about, mm-hmm. um, is dealing with a knee and they all practice in limited capacity all week. Center Cody Whitehair, who is on the reserve COVID list, could be activated in time for Monday night's game, according to head coach Mag Natty, but we are I don't have any update on that one yet. Um now, for the Vikings, it looks like this. Tight end Irv Smith Jr. is out, and cornerback Cameron Dantzler is mm-hmm. questionable with the concussion. But that's it. But for those that don't, don't follow the Vikes that closely, they have a few key players on injured reserve, most notably Anthony Barr, uh, linebacker, defensive end, Daniel Hunter, and corners Holton Hill and Mike Hughes. Edit, um, the Vikings place office lineman Drew Samia, who has four starts this year on the reserve COVID list. So that is the injury report for both squads heading into this Monday night football matchup. Oh, uh, so Montgomery is a no-go. Yeah, Montgomery's a no-go. So who if you will need... be starting at running back? It isn't Cordero Patterson, is it? Nah, Tariq Cohen is gone. Uh, let me look at the uh, their depth chart. Because that's a great question, because people are probably going to ask that as a fantasy question. Right. Like, right. who do I start? Uh, let me see. Because honestly, I know, I know, I know that uh, Montgomery is not playing, but Ryan, Ryan Nall is the backup running back Okay. Um, right now, Ryan Nall. So if you need a player um, to start, start Ryan Hall, never mind. Don't do that. The Chicago Bears offensive line is booty cheeks. Do not do that. <laughs> You don't, you don't have to worry about it. David Montgomery is playing, not playing. Don't even worry. Don't start him today. Don't start any um, Chicago running back today. Don't. Even Cordero Patterson, if you want to. Don't start him. Don't. It, it's not worth it. Their offensive line is just dealing with too much right now. So I don't think that they'll be able to get in uh, get that much push, even against the Vikings. Mm-hmm. Now, Dalvin Cook, on the other hand, don't even question it. <laughs> just go ahead. Start him. Right. Right. You want to uh, give us a chat update? Chat update. Uh, Steezy said, <laughs> Steezy said the Titans are two one dimensional. Um, he was calling Jalen Cap. <laughs> Jalen said, tell that, tell that to the past couple of weeks. Y'all beat the Bears because the offense sucked. Uh, Steezy said he blames the coaches. And um, Jalen said that he was talking about Devontae Adams, talking about Marvin Harrison type route running. Um, Absolutely. And then, Top five. Yeah, we both agree on that. Mm-hmm. And then um, he also, Jalen also mentioned that the running backs don't matter for Chicago because the line is so bad. So kind of just echo what we just said. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, that's the latest chat, yeah. chat update, real quick. That's coming. That's coming from a Bears fan. So. <laughs> hey, he, he, he sometimes. Right, <laughs> right, <laughs> right. So let's um, let's get into some keys to victory. We're gonna head back to the man cave. Woo! Alrighty, so keys to victory. I guess I will do Bears. You would do Vikings. Um, okay. I will go first. The, the the this game is a tricky game for the Bears. Three and outs cannot happen. They mm-hmm. need to win time of possession. I don't care if it's about one second. They need to win time of uh, possession. Because <laughs> if I look at this uh, 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 the box score, I'm looking at this game and I see the Vikings one time of possession by plus five minutes, I can tell you who won this game. Three and mm. outs cannot happen for the Bears tonight. I promise you, if it do, <laughs> this game will be over. I think everybody coming into this game is worried about 33. Where in the hell is number 33? Not only mm. running out of the backfield, but catching out of the backfield. Mm-hmm. Don't get so caught up on 33, and they hit you with a play action. Um, yeah. So control the ball, watch 33, but also be respectful of the play action uh, where I feel like Kirk Cousins is most – most comfortable at he's not he's not comfortable in, in, in primetime games but he's comfortable <laughs> off of the uh the play action what do you feel like are the keys to victory uh for the vikings uh vikings i think that kirk cousins bro can you can you not get us in uh, dangerous positions with your mm-hmm. turnovers mm-hmm. can you can you protect the ball um you mentioned time of possession i think the 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 vikings have to win time of possession because mm-hmm. um you know, you don't want Nick Foles to get any type of momentum. You don't. You want to have this Bears defense where they right where they belong on the on the field for a long period of time, mm-hmm. just like just like normal. That's the reason right. why they number eight. Um, also, can y'all get? I know I had 
my bold prediction in fantasy vibes was that the the Adam Thielen and Justin Jefferson are not going to finish as top 24 wide receivers this week. And um, I, reason being is just because the Bears back in is just, you know, elite. So um, can can the coaching staff figure out ways to get both of them star players studs on the outside going, especially when Dalvin Cook is cooking? And also, you mentioned don't get so caught up on 33 that you forget about the play action. Nah. Don't, that's that's a, that's a plus, but don't get so caught up in 33 that you miss number 25, I think. Number Alexander Madison, mm-hmm. he's he he's lit too. So mm-hmm. Dalvin Cook going to have to get some rest at some point. Mm-hmm. The backup is still legit. So um, keep your eyes on them. And then, of course, special teams. Like, can we get some uh, – can we – it's going to be like a field position game. Mm-hmm. So can we get some great field position just based on, like, great punting, um, mm-hmm. Can we can we count on our kickers to make field goals mm-hmm. uh, for both teams, but specifically for the Vikings? Um, can we can can y'all just get a win on the road? You know, can Kirk Cousins show up in prime time? That's my keys to victory. I I, I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, <laughs> these are those are <laughs> certainly uh, keys to uh, keys to victory. Um, and you mentioned special teams. When you have mm-hmm. two really elite special teams uh, playing that are, are sound on special teams. Um, Pay attention to special teams tonight. Even like this weekend, we've seen some great kick returns and punt returns this weekend yes. in the 10 alone. So I'm excited mm-hmm. to see the return game. So can I ask you something? Yes, sir. You, I, and Jalen, I don't believe we I don't believe we were live when we was having this discussion, but we were talking about Fuller. Mm-hmm. And we were mentioning. You, you talking about Lil Phil? <laughs> 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 we, we, were about, we, we were talking about Big Bro Fuller. And, um, and we, we were saying, like, do you think he's the best tackling cornerback in the league? Hell yeah. Okay. It's not even close. Um, he's, he's only one. Only well, actually, actually, it is close. I gotta put respect on my boy Jalen Ramsey too. Oh yeah. Um, he he's a good tackling corner. But yeah, like he he just he's like a kind of reminds me like Charles Tillman in a way, mm-hmm. but not from the standpoint of uh, creating turnovers, even though he can. Mm-hmm. But Charles like, do everything possible. But he reminds me of him just from his nose for the football, mm-hmm. like not being afraid, afraid to put his head in there and get physical. Um, but yeah, he yeah he'll be my number one uh, cornerback in the league as far as like tackling, for sure. So I've, I've developed a career path for him, and it's similar to the one that the the great Charles Woodson, my fa- one of my favorite football players of all time, and Rob Woodson also did. Um, you remember the Rob Wilson injury week one? I think yeah. it was the '95 season when Bernie Sanders gave him. The, <coughs> and mm-hmm. then he, he, he went from a cornerback <laughs> to a safety. <laughs> I got that. <laughs> but he had a career change hey, that yeah, quick. Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> hey, that boy Bernie Sanders, man. But um, like I can see him playing into his late 30s, just mm-hmm. being able to be uh, to play a safety. He's a high IQ. And he's physical, bro. You don't you don't mm-hmm. see a lot of uh, physical guys at cornerback. Um, I would so. love to see him at corner. I mean, I love to see him at safety, mm-hmm. especially especially free safety. Mm-hmm. Like you can just sit back, play the field. You know, still be solid in coverage. But then, like you know, if we have to play eight in the box and I trust you up top, mm-hmm. yes, I love that. Especially because I know you're gonna come downhill. Oh yeah, absolutely. So Coach Zimmer, Swaggy Naggy. Y'all welcome. We gave y'all the keys to victory for both of y'all teams. Um, up next, we're gonna actually stay right here, and we're gonna do another. We love we love this segment. If if y'all don't know, <laughs> start bench practice squad cut. We got the defenses of the NFC North. This one is difficult. Uh, <laughs> this one is difficult. It's difficult because I feel like the Packers secondary is very underrated. Mm-hmm. Uh, Especially when they all healthy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so you take them over Chicago though? No, no. Mm, Chicago's okay. uh, problem is they can't stay on the field offensively. Too many mm. three and outs, or mm-hmm. they'll get a first down on, on first down and then four and out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> get a first down, second out, then it's it's five and out. Like, no. That's when. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I I would go Chicago one. Mm-hmm. They starting. Yeah, they're starting. Um, it gets it, it gets interesting after here, bro. It, it, <laughs> it really does because I feel like you can go a myriad of of ways. Um, 
shit. It I don't ain't like hard. What, I don't like what the I don't like what the Bucks <laughs> did to the Packers defense. I, I mm-hmm. really don't. So was that was that really the Packers defense or was that just A Rod putting them in a hole and they A-Rod, couldn't bounce A-Rod, back? A Rod A Rod A Rod certainly put them in a hole that game. Mm-hmm. Um. And the Lions yesterday, I know they gave up a bunch of points in the second half, but when Matt Patricia went man across the board, um, mm, he was he able found to, something. Yeah, yeah, he was he was able he was definitely able to find something. Mm. Um, so I'm I'm gonna trust my gut. I'm gonna go with start the Bears, bench the Packers. Minnesota's been bad this year. So I'm gonna go with uh, cause we have seen the Lions kinda neutralize Kyler Murray. So I would uh practice squad and them cut the Vikings and I hate to say that because I respect Zimmer as a defensive man. Damn. All right. Well mine's gonna be a little bit similar to yours, but it's gonna be a little different. <laughs> I'm starting the Bears. Mm-hmm. I'm benching the Packers. I'm cutting both the Vikings and the Lions. <laughs> like both mm-hmm. of them can get cut. Right. They neither one is deserving of making the practice squad for me. Like, I'm cutting both of them. If I have a, it's kind of like NCAA, you got a certain amount of players you got to cut. Yep, both of them can go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm leaving them, but it's only because I, they don't, the top two are um, Bears and Bears and Packers. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking that's what it's going to come down with this division. Um, you know, in the Bears, I mean, the Bears, you know, you, you, you talked about it earlier, but like for the Vikings, I, I mean, not the Vikings, Packers, my bad. Um, injuries, like, can they, can they get healthy? I think um, yesterday they was without Kevin King, Jair. Like, they still held Jacksonville to, you know, Jake Luggan didn't do anything yesterday. Mm -hmm. So, um, they they definitely are getting my respect. But, you know, like you mentioned, that Tampa Bay loss is going to be on their record and their resume all year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, cut cut the Lions and cut the the Vikings. You uh, cut both of them? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I'm coming both of them. <laughs> uh, let's go. Let's go to the chat. See uh, who bro. they got. Uh, actually, Jalen said keys to victories. Foles has to be protected. Vikings to, is to find Shrine and throw his way. Jalen is right on it. Yeah, he definitely um, is. Um, then we have Jalen saying that start start Chicago, bench mm-hmm. Green Bay, mm-hmm. practice squad Lions, and then cut Minnesota. Yeah, so that's that's the same order I went with. And typically, we aren't all in agreement with this, but I think I like yours the best. <laughs> cut the Lions and cut Minnesota. Hey, but uh, guess what? Like, speaking of the Lions, uh, Jalen had an interesting take. He said it's going to come down to the Lions and the Packers in this division, not the Bears. But do you think that he's saying that he's, like, trolling, or you think he's saying that, like, legit behind nah, it? No, 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 no. He's been legit. Because if you remember about a month ago, I, I was thinking the Bears may be one of the best teams in the league because I, I had a feeling they could do what the 85 Bears did. But, mm-hmm. they, you know, 85 Bears still had Walter Payton in, a, in the offensive yeah, line where they, yeah. they, they can control the mm-hmm. ball. Um, so, now I don't think he's trolling because he, he's been dead on. Like, and for some reason, the Chicago Bears have been in a lot of primetime games, whether it be Monday night, Sunday. They've been on a lot of Thursday night. Like, mm-hmm. they, they 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 say that the, the Cowboys are America's team. Maybe the Chicago Bears are the America's team because they're, hey. they're always <laughs> on primetime. Um, Seems like it. Um, dang, they actually they got way more primetime games than the Cowboys did. <laughs> Besides that first game that started off on Sunday Night Football, I don't know if the Fire Boys been in prime time other than that. Hey, hey, Besides Moon, America's Game of the Week and stuff like that. Moon, I got a question for you. Yes, sir. Have you seen all the Rockies? Mm-hmm. Who was your favorite villain from the Rocky, mm-hmm. Rocky series? Drago. Uh, gotta go with Drago. Uh, Ivan Drago. <laughs> Gotta go with Drago. But close second is Mr. T, bro. Mr. T was Mr. that dude. Mr. Mr. T was my favorite Clump, runner, bro. Yeah, Clubber Lane. Clumber Lane. <laughs> I didn't know whether to go for him or Rocky when they was fighting, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but speaking of which, it's that damn time. Uh, Moon Vibes got a lot on his mind. And I'm telling you right now, man. Somebody about to get violated. Be back in a minute, all right? Ah, <laughs> oh, that's so funny. 
this dude, but what I'm about to talk about is not funny at all. So let me let me get my stuff together. I'm just about to read you some stats real quick. 2011, this player I'm about to talk about had 115 targets, 65 receptions, 1,005, 57 yards, 7 touchdowns. 2012, this player had 164 targets, 97 receptions, 1,300 yards, um, 11 touchdowns. 2013, this player had 98 receptions, 1,400 yards, 11 touchdowns. This is this two-year stretch right here, everybody was comparing him saying he was the best receiver in the league. Um, 2014, this man had 69 receptions, 1,000 yards, uh, six touchdowns. 2015, he had 86 receptions, 1,297 yards, uh, and 10 touchdowns. Then 2016 happened. He had uh, 66, 66 receptions on 100 targets, 964 yards, four touchdowns. 2017, he had 75 receptions, 1,078 yards, and eight touchdowns. Looked like he was coming back. Then 2018 happened. He had 46 receptions, 694 yards, and six touchdowns. That brings me to where I am right now. This year, so far, he has 68 targets, 31 receptions, 316 yards uh, catches. He has a yards per, um, per reception of 10.2 yards, so he's averaging a first down. But he has zero touchdowns on the season. In his career, he has 63 total touchdowns. In his career, his longest uh, catch is 82 yards. In his career, <laughs> this man has 9,223 9, yards rushing. I mean, receiving, my bad. When we kind of talk about this season as a whole, we talk about uh, the only the biggest game that he had so far this year was probably against Indianapolis, where he went 11 targets, eight receptions, 96 yards, and he didn't score. Oh, the second closest game that he had that was great uh, it was the week after when they played Cleveland, and uh, he had 13 targets, seven receptions, 82 yards. And all I was hearing was about this guy. I was just like, yo, he's coming back. He's coming back. He's finally ready. If you have any idea about who I'm talking about, and even if you don't, just know, I am done with this man. I'm through. I'm not. I'm. It's. It's. He's getting. We can't. We trying to keep him in your lineups. If you play fantasy football this past week, you know that this guy gave you zero point zero zero points. At some point, he was on the bench, uh, chopping it up with the coaching staff. He's been asked for a trade. We take a trip to Cincinnati, and who I'm talking about. And who I'm getting ready to throw the towel on for the rest of this season, with it only being about four to five weeks left in the fantasy season, I'm talking about AJ Green. I just gave you his whole resume, just right there for you. At this point, last week we had T.Y. Hilton, or two weeks ago we had T.Y. Hilton. He kind of bounced back. But I don't see no bounce back happening for AJ Green. Now it has nothing to do with health, because I feel like he's totally healthy, and it doesn't have any anything to do with a quarterback, because his quarterback is bomb. It really has to do with the fact that they drafted a wide receiver early, and that wide receiver is balling out right now. And this this GM and this this coaching staff is not the same that drafted AJ Green. So right now, it's nothing that's impressing them. So much so that he's been on the bench and not really running a lot of routes. This man gave you zero points last week. Do not trust him. AJ Green, it ain't nothing personal, my boy. But it's time. You know what time it is. We gotta throw the towel. We gotta throw the towel. We gotta throw the damn towel. <laughs> Back to KT, bro. Oh man, that was priceless, man. That was too funny. <laughs> um, uh, story time. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I, I picked up Cy Hilton. Yeah, the towel got thrown in on him. I picked up AJ AJ Green and yeah, the towel got thrown on him. <laughs> so oh, my, my advice to everyone, listen to this guy that's talking about fantasy right there. Please, please listen to Moon Vibes when it comes to fantasy. So Moon Vibes, we got about seven minutes until kickoff. So we're gonna mm-hmm. head into our predictions yes, here sir. and then you'll do the wrap up and send us home. Mm-hmm. So uh I guess I'll go first for predictions. The Vikings should win this game. They really should. Like, they got 33. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. they, they got Thielen on the outside. Mm-hmm. And they would have won this game if it was at 1 o'clock and not a nationally televised game. But because it's at 820 <laughs> on Monday night, the Vikings are not winning the game, bro. So we should have threw the damn towel in for Kirk Cousins <laughs> in primetime games, bro. 
Oh, man. Score prediction, I don't know. Kirk Cousins sells the bag with a minute and 30 sec- uh, seconds left. Uh, final score, Bears 20, Vikings uh, – I'm sorry, Bears 21, Vikings 17. <laughs> All right, so um, I've been thinking about this game, not just, you know, deep when I found out that they were playing um, last Tuesday. Mm-hmm. This game made me nervous because I was just like, okay, why are they giving the Vikings and the Bears a matchup when we got two quarterbacks that we don't trust? <laughs> mm-hmm. And we got we got we got them in the in the primetime sector. Um I know Kirk Cousins' record in primetime games is not impressive. Um it doesn't seem like that's gonna get get changed tonight. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I ain't gonna be long with it. My score, I got the Bears winning by a blowout. And I say the Bears win twenty seven to ten. And Dalvin Cook gets you a touchdown, but mm-hmm. that's the only offense they get out of scoring. 27-10, and the Bears don't win based on an offense. They win because of their defense. Their defense gets a touchdown, and um, special teams shows out too. That's my prediction. 27-10. All right, you want to go to the chat, see what their predictions are? Chat, let me know what your predictions are. LL Cool Brad says 35-10. to 10. Bears, I think. He has it. Yeah, Bears. 35-10. Brad, anytime Brad gives a prediction at he's this point, right. it's just like... No, Brad got right. the Vikings. He got, he's been dead on with these. No, he got Vikings. Okay. Yeah, he got Vikings. He he's got been Vikings. dead on with these picks, bro. Dead on. Uh, Chicago is 17. Uh, Vikings 31 for Jalen the Journalist. Mm-hmm. Uh, who else got predictions? Steezy says Vikings 27, Bears 21. Uh, yeah, but, and then Brad reiterated 35-10. <laughs> And then Jalen trolling him and talking about what the rest of the That's hilarious, bro. But yeah, that's the chat, man. That's the chat. <clears throat> all right, man. So before we get to the uh, wrap up, I want to shout out everybody who came in. Shout out all my R1P brothers, man. Like I said, we we did this for y'all. Me and Moon say we gonna we gonna hold it down tonight. You know, everybody got a lot going on. Um, wish a speedy re- recovery for Truth. Hope he's doing okay. Hope he's doing well. Uh, thank you to a significant other for coming in and, and checking us out tonight. But well, Moon Vibes, man, take us home with the wrap-up. Hey, well, hey, I appreciate y'all listening to in this uh, special edition of um, Night Primes. Hopefully you enjoyed your time. Um, if your team won this week, shout-out to you. If your team lost, hey, hey, it's always next week. Um, basically, the wrap-up is this. Uh, the, here's some things that I learned this week. That Arizona Buffalo game is the game of the year so far. Um, DeAndre Hopkins hauling in that game winning Hale Murray pass <laughs> from Kyle Kyler uh, was a player of the year. Um, in the last five games, Kyler Murray became the first quarterback in league history to produce a touchdown with both his arm and the legs in that many consecutive contests. And Arizona scored at least 30 points in five straight games, five straight games for the first time in franchise history. The Cardinals play Seattle this Thursday in the memorable words of former Jets linebacker Bart Scott. Can't wait. <laughs> the five. Uh, let's talk about uh, the AFC real quick. We got to talk about the consistency of Patrick Mahomes and the, and the Chiefs and the Steelers and Big Ben and the perfect team that they seem right now, um, even though uh, the Chiefs have a loss on this season. But I'm sadly disappointed with uh, Russell Wilson right now. Russell Wilson is suddenly Mr. Unlimited in the turnover department, committing seven of Seattle's two-game slide uh, in, in their two-game slide. Now, Mahomes has limited himself to one this entire season. Patrick Mahomes, I'm taking him ahead. Russell Wilson right now in my MVP race. Um, by now, you've kind of gleaned at the fact that the NFC East is just horrible. Um, however, it's now veered into historically object territory. The first place Eagles, who lost to their arch rival Giants on Sunday, still possess sole ownership of first place, despite a three and five one record per Elias Sports Bureau. No outright division winner since the 1970 merger has had fewer wins at this stage of the season, and yet the Eagles will also be alone in first place at the end of the week of, of League Eleven. My bad. When the second place Giants three and seven will be on a bye. However, New York might not now be the team worth watching. Um, the most. The Giants arguably have less talent than anyone else in the division, which was fairly evident amid their 0-5 start. But they won 3-5 of five and unfailingly played hard for rookie head coach Joe Judge. Give Joe Judge his credit. Number 9, Philadelphia was 0-9 for 9 on third down on Sunday. That's a problem. Not so bad considering that Cincinnati was 0-13 for 13 on third down Sunday. That's horrible. But no one's confusing the Bengals as a playoff team. Everybody thought that Philadelphia was going to be. 
Then we talk about quarterback Daniel Jones, who's in the second year. He posted some consecutive games without a turnover for the first time in his career. Clap it up. <laughs> Look at Daniel, bro. Daniel playing in work. <laughs> Then we talk about Daniel Jones again. He also had 34-yard touchdown run against the Eagles three weeks after he turfed himself shy of a goal line in Philadelphia after sprinting for 80 yards. Your speed on Madden is going up, my guy. It's at 89 now. Daniel Jones' trio of runs over 30-plus yards this season equal the output of Ravens counterpart Lamar Jackson. <laughs> Never thought we would be comparing Daniel Jones and Lamar Jackson. Elsewhere in the NFC East, the Washington uh, Burgundy and Gold uh, team <laughs> opportunity to pick up a game in the stand is coming up short 30 to 27 in Detroit. However, Alex Smith, who is three days shy of a two year anniversary of his frightful lower leg injury, started for the first time since that fateful game to 728 days ago. Smith's 38 completions, 55 throws, and 390 air yards all established career highs. And for a man still suffering from drop foot, can we put a bow on the comeback player of the year award for Alex Smith? I think so. Speaking of anniversaries, Monday will mark the one year since Dolphins quarterback Tua Tagovailoa suffered a dislocated, dislocated hip that prematurely ended his stunt at, stint at Alabama. But things have turned out all right. Tua Tagovailoa improved his record to 3-0 since taking over as Miami starter, beating the Chargers and fellow 2020 first-round draft pick Justin Herbert. Uh, then we talk about Washington again. Washington featured two receivers since Sims, <laughs> Cam, and Steven, and they combined for nine catches for 100 yards. But a pair of Marvins always beats a pair of Sims. And Detroit proved that with wide receivers Marvin Jones and Marvin Hall teaming up for 10 receptions, 157 yards, and two scores. Um, lastly, the Packers, who struggled to beat the woeful Jaguars 24-20, to failed to score on their opening drive for the first time this season. Who would have thought it came against the Jags? Um, then we get to the Rams. The Rams sack Russell Wilson six times Sunday. Offensive, outside linebacker Leonard Ford had a career-best three by um, your boy in the middle, Aaron Donald, didn't have a sack. If it's possible to push the pin and button, perhaps we should do so for the Buccaneers after they erupted for the season high 46 points a week after being whooped by the Saints. It's possible to push a pin and button despite the 7 2 record tied for the NFC's best, including that 38 3 whipping of the Bucks in week nine. We have. We might have our fingers on it for the Saints in light of the Drew Brees rib injury. Shout out and prayers up to Drew Brees. The good news that is if Brees does miss time is that the New Orleans next four games are against the Eagles, Broncos, and we play the Barbecue Falcons twice. That each can uh, can be three wins, maybe. The bad news is that the Saints have an unproven backup quarterback in Taysom Hill and a proven turnover machine in backup quarterback Jameis Winston. For this wrap-up, i give you some interesting facts that you need to know this week. We send it back to the KT. Hey, hey bro, before, before we leave out, man. Hey... Hey, but before we leave out, man, so I I went to I went to sleep late today. I I uh, I was talking to uh, Moon and Jalen for a couple hours, and so when I woke up this morning, I rolled over and I checked my phone. My father sent me a video, bro. Get ready for Stokes and Son. I'm gonna tell y'all what the video what what, what what was it? It was come with me, Hail Mary, <laughs> one quick seat. I'm like, uh, that, that's what we doing this Monday morning. Like, your Cowboys not playing like crap. You gonna send me Hail Mary by, by, by Tupac because Calamari's through the Hail Mary to the top. Like, bro. Yo, that's trolling at its finest. Yeah, bro. But, um, looks that's like crazy. this game this game has started, man. Moon, I had a lot of fun doing this, man. Hey, no doubt, my brother. No doubt, man. Shout out to, shout out to the boys, man. We gotta do more of these more often. Absolutely, man. Hoel's in the building. What's good, Playboy? But yeah, so we about to send y'all out to our boy Jimmy Two Bloods. Two Bleezies. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. We appreciate y'all tuning in. Make sure you following us. Uh, if you love what we do, man, make sure you following us. Uh, tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. Spread the word. The movement and the wave is taking off. Make sure you surf it. Um. If you want to follow or more, want more information, check us out on YouTube at Real Ones Productions. Subscribe to our YouTube. Um, make sure you follow our socials. And most importantly, man, do something nice for somebody you normally wouldn't do. You never know how much you can change somebody's life just by being selfless. Uh, from me, Moon Vibes, and my host, uh, KT, we send y'all out to the Bears and Vikings, man. Absolutely. Kirk Cousins, guess what? You're locked up. I'm not letting you out this week. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, hey, are you trying to trade my Ovechkin jersey for that Herschel Walker jersey? 
We can make that happen. We you know, mine, mine's is autograph. I don't think mine. You got the, you got the, you got the autograph of Vetsky. I don't think so, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you got, you got, you got keep, you got keep the Persian <laughs> Walker back. And we'll see y'all next time. Now we got to rain too much. Yep. I'm going in. Hey, two months, man. Hey, salute, my brother. Salute, man.